Well, um, hello, everybody, and welcome to the Founders on Fire podcast, where we meet with the founders of our tech trailblazing winners over the last decade. And I'm delighted to be joined here by Jeff Denworth, who is the Chief Marketing Officer and co-founder of Fast. Sorry, Fast. Well, we could call, we could call you Fast, but actually you Vast Data. And who were the winners last year in the Storage Trailblazers category? Um, welcome, Jeff. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks, Rose. Happy to be here. Fantastic. You know, the, the name Vast is actually an amalgam of, uh, you know, kind of fast and big, but, you know, fig or uh, I don't know how you pronounce the opposite of it, but it just didn't work for a naming purpose. <laughs> yeah. So we just said, let's just go fig, fast. Fig storage just wouldn't cut it really, would it? <laughs> right, right. Fig systems. <laughs> fig no, systems. No good. Um, apologies now to anybody who has named their startup Fig Systems um, because Vast Data almost got there first, but luckily you got that one. So anyway, Jeff, thank you for joining us. I know you've just landed in Austin, Texas, which is very exciting. What are you doing there? Oh, we have a pretty big team in Texas uh, and uh, a good number of them have, have yet to meet anybody in the company. So, um, mm. you know, I'm trying to make it a, a, a goal to meet those people that have come in and because of COVID haven't been able to travel or this or that and um, where we can make the personal touch, we try to. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, that sounds very good. I know there are a lot of people who are looking forward to meeting colleagues. A lot of people, as you say, who've started their their journey with a, a new company. And obviously, I, I think Vast has been growing quite considerably over the last 12 months as we've been dealing with the pandemic. So I should imagine there's quite a few people who are now old hands in startup terms, perhaps, but still very much new faces. This so. is true. You, you start to get familiar with people over Zoom and then, you know, you meet them in person and you realize that they either are exactly or almost a, a, to the opposite what you thought they were. So yeah, and then you find out they're 10 feet tall and you go, I didn't expect that. Yeah, so we, we've hired probably about 100 people, I would say, over the last 12 months or so. So it, wow. it is kind of the nor new normal. Um, we've, we've taken investment from investors that we haven't even met face-to-face. -face, so Yeah, next, next 47 led your last round, which was April 2020. So obviously, just as everything was becoming very hard to meet people face-to-face, um, where, which one, which team were you primarily interfacing with for next 47? Um, well, we, we work with the principal, which is, uh, Locke, he's our board member and, mm. um, you know, they've been an amazing partner. Uh, the, one of the hallmarks of, of their kind of investment thesis is that they aren't just providing money. They're also providing assistance in the form of business development. So as a, as a, the investment arm of Siemens, they get to do some pretty interesting things that an, a classic investor doesn't get to do. Ah, They've been great okay. to work with. Fantastic. That's the German connection. Because I was thinking, why do I think the next 47 has got a German? Because I was thinking, is the Berlin the headquarters then? Uh, I think it's in Silicon Valley. Oh, okay. Yeah, wow. That's, that's you know, true. we're all global Zoomers now, so it doesn't really matter where you this are. This is true. So, well, fantastic. unless you're stuck in the airport. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we won't hold you up too long. We won't hold you up too long, but it was great to catch up with you. Um, right, so from that perspective, obviously, Next47, actually we're an investor of Cohesity, who, who were winners in the Storage Trailblazers a number of years ago. So they're obviously... There's a pattern. There is a pattern there. <laughs> there is a pattern there. So that's good. And you guys are looking at a 1.2 billion valuation at the moment, or you were when you received your funding. Oh, that was that was uh, on the is that old the news? Of our, yeah, uh, well, you know, it depends on who you're talking to. Ooh, um, but it's new that, for me. that was on the heels of our 2019 business performance. Ah, okay. And you've done incredibly well. I was looking. You, I got some stats there. You've been doing rather well over the last two years. Rose, it's been awesome. Um, you know, we, 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 we all kind of took a pause when COVID hit and we didn't know which way the, the world would be spinning, you know, throughout mm -hmm. the year. And turns it out, right product, right place, right time. Mm. Um, but the, the team really over-delivered uh, at a time of great uncertainty. So it, it's just been awesome to, to watch the whole vast team kind of get together and um, overpower even the, the the very aggressive expectations that we set at the beginning of 2020 
Mm. Uh, and to exceed those, it's just been amazing. Yeah. Well, I'm sure the investors and everybody's really happy about that because, you know, everybody must have been taking a very sharp intake of breath as they were seeing what could be, you know, the worst case scenario. Obviously, there's been a worst case scenario, which is on a personal and a sort of a health perspective. But from a business perspective, it's good to see that you are doing more than just weathering the storm. You're actually doing incredibly well. So 150 million less in the last two years. I believe. Well, uh, we we actually exited the last quarter at a hundred and fifty million dollar run rate, which mm-hmm. uh, you know kind of capped off the year where we we grew by three hundred and fifty percent as compared to the previous year. Mm. And um, and so you know it's the company's just on a rocket ship. And one of the interesting things um, that the the storage reporter community clued into is it's like, Mm. it's really easy for an organization to talk about amazing growth if they don't start from a very large base. But, you know, we've kind of managed to strike this really interesting balance between just spectacular revenue growth, but also a a very significant business. Mm. We've sold nearly a hundred million dollars of product in our first two years. And and candidly, that's never been done in this industry before by any company, uh, even some of the kind of the leading high flyer multi-billion dollar uh, public companies right now. So mm. we're setting a new bar and we're doing it at a very interesting time. Well, interesting you mentioned reporters because a very good friend of mine tipped me off to you guys. We actually did pursue you to hopefully get you to participate. I'm talking about the wonderful Mr. Deep Storage. Uh, Mr. Oh, Howard yeah. Marks, who's a good friend of mine from the SNW good old days when we used to meet up in Orlando. Howard's uh, Howard's a part of our team. He's uh, he's just, you know, we have these pictures of him that are he's dressed as a wizard, and there are just conversations that you can find yourself in with Howard that you realize the depth of knowledge is is just off the charts. You don't mm-hmm. even try to. Um, <laughs> to kind of keep pace with him, you just try to catch the nuggets that he's leaving. Uh, yeah, so he's been with us for, I think he just celebrated his two-year anniversary the other day. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, in fact, you guys have just had your second birthday anyway, February 2019 when you launched. I think we call it our launch anniversary. Uh, yeah, launch-aversary. we just celebrated our second. Um, mm-hmm. And that was an interesting one. You know, a lot of the you know, when, when you start a company, there's a lot of people that tell you exactly how it should be done. Um, and we remember, you know, in the, in the earliest days, we, we decided to start selling before we came out of stealth mode, um, which was a little unorthodox. And by the time we had gotten to the launch date, we had, um, we'd sold more than any storage company had in their first year of operation, you know, kind of pre, you know, exit from stealth mode. So we got some fun stories to tell there, but the kind You're of just showing was off you don't now. have to rush things. <laughs> You're just well, showing you, off now. You know, it, <laughs> uh, m- maybe, but I'm also trying to give some guidance, which is that, yeah. you, you know, you don't necessarily need to kind of toe the line that everybody else does. If the dynamics are different, you can carve your own path. And, you know, we weren't rushed. Uh, I think we did things relatively well. Um, and, you know, part of that comes from just kind of challenging convention about how things have been done before. Well, we're called Trailblazers for a reason. So I'm very glad that you're living up to your, um, your required moniker from us. With regards to that. So I've scooted around because I do very kindly provide you with questions and then totally ignore them when I actually have you on the phone. Isn't that (laughs) kind of me? Oh, there we go. I I thought you'd be easing yourself into this very easy one. Oh, it's just somebody talking about some award, you know, the Tech Trailblazers Awards that we won. And they go, oh, no, they're asking me all these difficult questions. But, uh, well, not difficult because you know the answers. So it's never difficult then. Um, So... Let's sort of rein back a little bit because we've kind of started with the very sort of great conversation, but I just want to make sure I'm ticking all the boxes of what people expect from the podcast. So, um, sure. so tell us a bit about you and the, the journey. Because sure. I, I, I assume because you've come from Satera, who were actually, I noted, finalists in 2012 in our first edition. So, but you you joined them a couple of years later, but you were with DDN prior to that. So, am I right in thinking that you knew your co-founders prior to founding Vast? Um, well, I'm I'm kind of a, a consummate masochist. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure they know, won't I've... say that personally. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, in my current role included, you know, startups are just so much work. But uh, 
I, I really <laughs> enjoy building businesses and, um, you know, my, my specialty is, is storage. So, uh, yeah, I've, I've been in storage for almost 20 years. Actually, if you predate, uh, DDN, which is a pretty popular company, um, there's a company I was at previous to that, that, uh, gave birth to the luster file system, which is now a fairly popular, um, file system and scalable computing. So yeah, in total, I've been probably about 20 years in the storage space. And pretty much a, a big part of that in the startup land as well. Yes. Yes. I, I, I can't really, I mean, I think it, it's a matter of personal preference, but I can't really envision myself uh, in some sort of like big hundred thousand person company. It just, there, there's a level of agility and autonomy and, you know, the ability to break things that I enjoy in the companies that I work with that I, I probably, you know, kind of naturally couldn't mm. give up. So, so yeah, I'm a startup guy. Mm. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. We love startup guys. Absolutely. <laughs> love them. So, um, Tell us a little bit about, you know, we've touched upon some of the amazing success. I mean, obviously, as you say, you've only come out of stealth two years ago, just over two years ago, but you were already hit the ground running prior to that. So obviously you had product, you were selling product. So you've been trailblazing in, in really uh, just shaking the foundations of how you're supposed to start uh, an enterprise tech startup. Yeah. Because obviously that seems to be a bit of a pattern is that, you know, you come out of stealth, you've then you start getting your first customers and your investment and da, 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 and that's how you do it. Yeah, so the, the, the company basically started with this idea that Flash could be an appropriate alternative to, and obviously a, a very compelling alternative to hard drive-based mm. infrastructure in the market. And mm. as we started to unravel um, what we had, we, we realized that it also resulted in being able to rethink the ways in which customers deploy storage altogether. And so, you know, we, we kind of chose to launch and uh, which still is an on-premises storage appliance at a time where customers said everybody's going to cloud. Uh, and as opposed to just kind of picking off one part of the storage market, our thinking was we basically had to go in and say, we want to kind of steamroll the whole thing. Uh, and so that's resulted in a, a number of kind of really challenging, both architectural objectives, as well as customer objectives, like, you know, the, the challenges that we raise for customers in terms of them rethinking how they do things that uh, has resulted in some pretty crazy outcomes. So obviously, you've had your last round of investment. So you're very well funded, you're growing very, you know, aggressively. And, you know, the sales are coming in, you've, you know, secured something with major US federal agency of 10, $10 million investment. Yeah. Around consolidating have... data analytics infrastructure. I've got a feeling they might be in Virginia and might have a few letters in their name. But that's me <laughs> just guessing. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, you're doing very well. You've got the backing of Goldman Sachs, Greenfield Partners, Mellanox, Dell Technology Capital. I think who's missing, right? There's, you know, uh, I better say them all now 83 North, Common Found Capital, and Northwest Venture Partners. Uh, and obviously led the last round, Next 47. I mean, where next? What more can well, you know, what can you tell us about what's happening? <laughs> happening next? There's uh, <laughs> yeah. So you know the the funny thing about the investment is that um, is that we haven't we haven't dipped into that round. Um, you know, one of the things that we really challenge ourselves to do is to build uh, a company that is not only high growth but also really capital efficient. And so if if you've ever encounter if you ever get the chance to encounter our CEO Renan. Uh, you'll find that he's a, a pretty frugal guy. I shall um, hunt him down and insist he buys me a latte. <laughs> yeah, you might be going Dutch on that one. Oh, but, God. Uh, Half a latte then. Half a latte. Yeah, that might work. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, we, we kind of realized that if you sold big systems and you really focused in on what you did well, um, then you didn't necessarily need to build the same type of company that has been built in the past. So, you know, a lot of the really successful storage players of the last couple of years, they, they, they took in anywhere between, um, you know, half a billion to a billion dollars of, of spent money before they got to cash flow positivity. Mm. Um, we've already achieved that as of the end of last year. Um, we kind of stack our, our headcount up against some of our peers at equivalent revenue levels. Uh, and, and our team's about half the size. So we just mm. have, we have a, a smaller collection of, of really dedicated professionals that um, allow us to be independent from a capital perspective. 
Oh, this is music to my ears. I absolutely love this stuff where you're, you know, in, in effect, you didn't actually need to take that round of funding in that case. Well, you know, it, I'm the not saying that you shouldn't have done, but. Wait, you know, on the, on the heels of the, the previous year's yeah. performance, we got, we got good terms. Mm -hmm. um, but we actually closed the round pretty much right at the beginning of COVID. So um, as I mentioned, we hadn't met a lot of our investors, but uh, it, it was kind of fortuitous because we didn't know how deeply we might have to dig into the rainy day fund. Uh, it turns mm. out we didn't have to dig into it at all, fortunately. Um, but but it, it came at the right time where, you know, nobody knew how the year was going to end up uh, in March. Well, exactly. So it worked out for us. And you don't know what, what we don't know what's next, do we? I mean, you <laughs> you right. launched, you know, you launched. Um, where did I see that? In, in, oh, yeah, in September you launched Lightspeed, which I have to ask: Are you going to get investment from Lightspeed VC firm? Because <laughs> that feels like that should happen now. Like, well, I, it, it's the new strategy. You just pick the name of the venture capitalist you want, uh, and then you, you name a product after them. I think this could yeah. be the way forward. I think you've got another marketing, marketing sort of like everybody says marketing doesn't necessarily impact like your funding. I say, well, here it is. We've got it now. So um, yeah, I mean, you've got all these fantastic things happening. What's going to be next? Can you give us any little, little sure. tantalizers in what to be looking forward to in the next year? Apart from obviously, hopefully doing very, very well in the tech trailblazers again this year. Fingers crossed. Mm -hmm. um, You've set so, the bar high, as you said, right? <laughs> so I, I think, you know, over the next couple of weeks, we'll start to make announcements around uh, a refinement of the kind of the storage business model or the storage consumption model. Oh. Uh, and, and here... Um, we see an opportunity to, um, to to not necessarily take customers down this path where, you know, everything's cloud and consumption all the time, but at the same time, um, bring them a lot of the benefits of, of cloud consumption. Uh, and, you know, when we think about this program that we're about to unveil, there's kind of like customer personas. And you have the customers today that are buying from Amazon, and then you have the customers that want to be the next Amazon. And I think our program is really tailored for that latter community. You know, we're telling people you don't have to necessarily buy from Jeff Bezos. In this case, you can become the next Jeff Bezos. And, oh, and what wow. we're doing is, is challenging how people build infrastructure and deploy, um, deploy their data storage. So we're Ooh. excited about that. Well, I don't think Jeff uh, might is necessarily going to hold um, your enthusiasm. Well, he's retired now. So, so uh, you know, somebody needs to take the crown. I think I think he I think he's probably still <laughs> counting his beans from afar. What can I say? Well, you know, good luck with that. You know, it sounds exciting. You know, in the same way as Amazon, obviously smashed through some perceptions. Absolutely, let's see what what Vast can come up with and and allow people to do stuff like this for themselves. So yeah, so that sounds exciting. Have you got a date for when you'll be announcing that? Uh, we do. It's uh, April sixth. Mm, so not long. So it's today. right around the corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the polish is being put on the website now for this one. Mm. Um, and then following that, uh, you know, we've kind of been fortunate to uh, have doubled the engineering team over the last twelve months, mm -hmm. uh, and we practically need to double it again this year. But uh, you know, now that the product is is the, the foundation is set and stable, mm. we just have like a litany of feature releases that will come out throughout the year. Mm -hmm. Uh, at the end of the year, we'll have a new hardware platform that we get to unveil. So lots of stuff. Um, yeah. Mm. Right. Well, we should be watching this space with great interest with regards to that. So any tips? I mean, you've talked about what you guys have done. What's been the secret? I mean, obviously, you can't totally re reveal the secret source apart from the fact that you're your co-founder and CEO won't buy me coffee. I don't think that's the, <laughs> I don't think that's the secret to your success. I don't drink that much coffee. I do drink a lot, but you know, not that much. Um, what you know, what tips would you would you share with people about this? And and what are your favorite moments as well? Maybe we start with your favorite moments of your journey so far. My favorite moment. Your um, key moments. Because I always think key yeah. moments should be favorite ones, right? You know, <laughs> there's there's a few. Um, you know, it's it's just such a, a fun team to work with. Where every mm -hmm. day there's like little cute stories that pop up. Um, but you know, one of my favorite moments was you know before we had customers, <laughs> before we had any salespeople. 
I would hold uh, a sales kickoff for the engineering team. And the engineers don't want to talk about sales at all. Um, but, but really what the objective was, you know, my job was to kind of be the, the, the pathfinder and go and, and rustle up the early customers. And, you know, in the absence of having anybody else to talk to, um, I used to just fly out to meet them and we'd sit down for a half a day and talk about how the next couple of years could play out if these early customers came on board. Um, and, and what that did in the earliest days was it really it instilled a, a, a deep sense of customer centricity into the company. But at the same time, you know, half the people in the room were looking at me like I had three heads just because I was talking in seven different directions about all these crazy things that our customers wanted to do. And, and they loved it. So, so that, I think, set the company off on a really good foot. And I think we did like two sales kickoffs without any salespeople before the, they actually started coming in. And we just had a, a great one with them the other day. But but that, that was cool. And then the first time we got our, our, our first big order, you know, this is an order over $2 million. Uh, I remember before the order even booked, mm. we, we had a board meeting and the board member looks at me and goes, what is this? And I said, yeah, it's like a three to $4 million order. He's like, this is impossible. And I said, well, you're supposed to be on our side, right? You're the, you're the cheerleader. And he said, you know, I'm also supposed to be practical and this has never been accomplished. Uh, and that gave the team a, a challenge to go and not just, you know, prove them wrong, but to, to rather prove history wrong. Uh, and when we closed it, it was a very special moment. So yeah. yeah, those are, those are the types of stories that I enjoy. Yeah, exactly. That kind of thing. So what would you, you know, to other startups, you know, maybe they're, they're still in stealth and, or maybe they're just coming out of stealth or they're maybe even a couple of years down down the path, what would be your sort of bits of advice, apart from obviously enter awards like the Tech Trailblazers, which would be your number one tip. But other than that, what would you, you know, advise them to do? On that topic, Rose, it was, you know, it was, a, it was awesome to win the award. But I think what I liked even better is when we started seeing some other players in the space start to message the fact that they won things like runner up. Because that's when we knew that the Tech Trailblazers Award was like really cool, and you know, it just it just gave us such a uh, a sense of pride. But in terms of um, in terms of the, the guidance, you know, I I think the fundamentals are are probably the simplest thing to impart, which is you know, startups just take so much work, and if you're not willing to put in that work, then you should probably, you know, unless you're a bunch of like. Um, you know, MacArthur geniuses, then it, it, you may not be successful. I mean, it, you know, you need a good idea, of course, but, but mm. execution is the number one element. And every single competitor that you enter into the market to displace has more resources than you do. So you have to work quicker and harder than all of them. Mm. Uh, and then, you know, that, that's kind of our core. Uh, and, you know, I put out a tweet the other day that said, I'm kind of routinely doing 100 hour weeks. I'm not saying everybody needs to work that, but, but it is just a tremendous amount of work to keep the momentum. Uh, and you mm -hmm. have to kind of, you have to really be in it. Uh, startups aren't for the faint of heart. Um, the other thing I would say is that, you know, there's a lot of trappings that come along with startups. And if you ever visited our New York office, you'd find that we have almost no concern for frills. Mm. You know, it's like a, it's like a 10 desk we work office that we have right now. Um, and mm. then people kind of come in and out of it, but, but you spend your time and spend your money on things that matter and really know what matters, uh, and, and surround yourself with a team that cares about what matters, not necessarily what feels good. Mm. And you can be really successful, but people can get really caught up in trying to be the next Facebook and, you know, <laughs> In the earliest days, Facebook wasn't anything like that. They can pay for that now through their success. Mm, yeah, interesting. One of our um, one of our judges did a a blog post, or I know he's in one of his newsletter, and I was going to reach out to him. So I am now doing that, Ben. So Ben Keeps was talking about you know people who have the frills and the spills, and to kind of that that's not the important thing. That's not the reason why people go and have a startup you know if you want to buy a boat or you want to have a fast car or whatever and that that is not necessarily the right motivation I mean I've met Ben a number of times you know he's a very down-to-earth guy he doesn't go for super yes. trendy stuff you know it, I think he's trendy because I think he's very cool but not in that sort of flashy perhaps flashier way um and so I think that 
from what you're saying is, and, and it's also a view that I share, is that ultimately your customer is the most important thing. Funding is great, but ultimately you want to preserve the value for the people who come up with the idea as well as provide a great return on investment for your investors, right? So sure. you can get a lot of money and dilute basically what the the core team is going to get out of it in the in the long run, depending on where you where you go. Or you can run a very tight ship, which it sounds like you you guys do, um, which is commendable. And I, you know, although I would very much like to enjoy a coffee with your CEO, I'm very happy to pay for that myself. So, um, so from that perspective, I think you know, I I I don't think that anything that you're saying should be, you know, this shouldn't be news to people. But I suspect it it, it somewhat is because we've become of that view that startups are a trendy and glitzy and you know you have to have all the frills and the free beer and everything like that and in reality that's nice to have but i think you guys focus very much on not just your customers but on your team which i think is really important and if you lose it, sight it free, of that that's not yeah good. if you lose sight of it you, you lose a culture of uh i think accomplishment right Ooh. you know and um frank slootman wrote a great book called tape is dead and it basically said, you know, a culture where you're just like heaping praise upon people all day long, it, it can create a, a sense of false uh, self-accomplishment. And so, you know, we, we, we try to just kind of be very pragmatic, very practical and, and not get caught up in the trappings because they, at the end of the day, they don't change our fortunes. They just kind of dilute the, the investment that our investors are making. Hmm. Fantastic. So is there anything else you'd like to say? Because you're probably, you know, you're on your way to, well, hopefully looking at the time to meet the team. So hopefully I've not delayed you from them because obviously they're no, the most no, no. important guys. Um, anything else you'd like to share? I was going to say, what else do you do? But if you're doing a hundred hour weeks, then you'd probably only have time to sleep. That's uh, pretty much true. Pretty mm. much true. Uh, you know, like I said, these things are, are hard work and mm. you, you have to know what you want to get out of them. And there needs to be a time when these are done where, you go and recover that kind of like uh, that personal time, but while you're in it, you have to be in it. So um, I have three amazing kids and I have a, an extremely tolerant wife of my kind of my career. Um, and that's what I get to spend all my time doing. Well, that sounds like a great time. You know, kids will keep you super busy <laughs> for sure. They do. They, they, you know, that BBC journalist, right, that BBC interview where the, I think it was BBC where the kids came into the, to the Zoom call. That's well, wonderful. And are you based in Texas, or I assume you're based? Is no. it New York? I'm in. I'm just outside of New York in a town called Little Silver, which is uh, just south of Manhattan. Oh, sounds fantastic! Sounds fantastic. Well, hopefully we will all get an opportunity to meet up in person in the future and perhaps we'll see you over on this side of the pond in the UK or at some kind of event over in the States. So, Jeff, thank yeah, you so I much hope. for joining us. Thank you, Rose. Thank it's you, been Rose. a pleasure to get to know you a little bit better. I wish you and the team, you know, fantastic continued success. And we'll obviously be watching that with great interest and keeping an eye out for your announcements from April the 6th onward. Um, and yeah, so thank you very much for joining us. Thanks. Thanks for having us. Thanks for the award to all the, uh, the judges from uh, the Trailblazer, I guess, judger panel. I don't know how you Ooh. call it, but... Uh, our tra and our Trailblazer <laughs> judges, panel of judges. So yes. Oh, okay. That's, that's okay. The Tech Trailblazer panel of judges. Well, thanks to all of them. And uh, look out for us next year because we're definitely going after the award again fantastic we look forward to that and that was jeff denworth who is the chief marketing officer and co-founder of vast data who are our storage trailblazing winners in 2020 and wishing them best of luck and obviously you can listen to jeff and, and others here on the podcast and we look forward to hearing more about their success moving forward and if you'd like to hear from more of our founders, you can find us on the usual channels for podcasts. And please follow us on social at Tech Trail Blaze on Twitter and Tech Trail Blazers on LinkedIn. And we're at techtrailblazers.com. And I'm Rose Ross, co-founder and chief trailblazer. 
at the awards. Thank you, Jeff.